So ladies and gentlemen, good morning from uh, Greece. Good morning from the Athena European University. One of the, I will say, more interesting parts beyond engineering uh, talks that we have. And we had, you know, through this uh, series of talks the, that happens every week, we are very happy to have with us Monica Matsueliene. Um, it's um, a science, she's an associate professor in Vilnius Gediminas uh, Technical University, Vilnius Tech, uh, one of the partners of the main partners of the Athena uh, European University. Um, she's a very active researcher. She's a head of the Citizen Science Association in Lithuania. I have learned from her that you know similar hubs exist in all the European countries. Uh, her work has received more than 500 citations. Her research topics include co-creation, citizen science, open science, and citizen engagement. And uh, the today's talk is entitled Citizen Science in Lithuania. Does our science and innovation ecosystem anticipate the input of citizens? <laughs> so this is very important right now regarding the research that we are doing, the impact of the research. So I will provide the floor and I'm eager uh, to learning from uh, Monica uh, about the good policies and exams, what happens about this topic in Lithuania in order to copy or to follow some of these activities within the universities, but also in our countries. The floor is yours, Monica. And thank you once again for your participation. Uh, it's very important for our alliance and for our ecosystem and our you know, collaborator. Thank you. Thank you, Konstantinos. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, like Konstantinos uh, beautifully introduced me, I'm Monica Mochilene, representing uh, uh, Vilnius Tech University here in Vilnius, Lithuania. And um, um, in, in, at Vilnius Tech, I'm in charge of um, um, running the Citizen Science Hub. Um, so organizing different uh, kind of outreach and training activities. And also my research focus is on citizen science uh, and its implementation in the regions where the participation of citizens in um, RNI activities is not that mature and um, a newly established um, a newly established principle. So in today's presentation, I will focus on citizen science, but also on open science, because these are, of course, very closely relate, related. Um, they are implementation in Lithuania, and I will uh, uh, present the activities that are, ha that are happening um, in our university, in our country, and also some research um, um, from a variety of projects that we are running, representing the main challenges in our country and in our region, and some ways of how to move forward. So hopefully this presentation will um, lead to a discussion on how to um, improve citizen science uh, and open science activities, not only in Lithuania, but uh, in the whole uh, European Union and beyond. Um, so to, to start off, um, I was not sure of the um, um, background of the people that are joining this call. Um, and so I wanted to give a short um, definition, a short uh, introduction of what citizen science uh, is. It's becoming a very popular and hot topic um, in the European Union. Um, however, there are very um, varied and large number of definitions available because the field is still growing, evolving, and different researchers are um, understanding the concept in different um, in different ways. But in the most basic sense, citizen science can be understood as uh, when the public uh, voluntarily helps to conduct scientific research. And this could be applied at different stages of uh, the research, research pro, uh, process. Uh, most commonly, it is understood, uh, understood in a way that citizens are helping scientists to collect large amounts of data. However, their participation is anticipated um, in other stages. So, for example, when formulating the research uh, problems, which are um, uh, more accustomed to, for example, local communities. Uh, also, uh, science, uh, citizens could be involved in outreach and dissemination activities, you know, tell, telling stories um, about science in a more understandable way. Uh, uh, scientists can also uh, participate in data analysis, um, and in this way also um, allows the scientists um, um, to have more time on, on more complicated, uh, on, on more complicated um, tasks. So um, there are um, 
a number of different uh, projects around the world, which are quite famous um, um, and uh, focus on different um, um, different topics of science. Um, so, for example, Zoo Universe, iNaturalist, um, NASA runs um, a variety of projects focused on citizen science. And um, most commonly, these projects are focused um, on um, uh, um, uh, uh, nature sciences and social sciences are still catching up with uh, uh, with the application of citizen science uh, methodologies in their in their research. However, some examples uh, already exist. So, for example, citizens help um, social scientists to transcribe interviews or different documents that are needed for their research. Uh, some developments are happening in um, the field of uh, analyzing misinformation. So, um, citizens are invited to. Um, help uh, scientists to uh, identify different items of uh, fake news or misinformation and so on. So the applicability of um, um, citizen science is uh, quite varied and many uh, opportunities exist for the, for the scientists to um, involve citizens in their uh, research, um, in their research um, um, process. Uh, Yes, so if we look at um, citizen and open science in the context of the European Union, uh, we could see that the previous framework program, the Horizon 2020, had some pilots of open science and citizen engagement activities, um, uh, but mostly the focus was on um, um, spreading the principles of open access throughout the European uh, Union. And citizen engagement was um, a priority, but not uh, such a major and cross-cutting issue. Uh, however, if you look at the new framework program, which has just started with, um, uh, uh, with, with the project just starting up, uh, we can see that the openness in science um, is already um, a firmly established uh, principle uh, with um, citizen engagement and society engagement um, uh, activities running at the um, uh, forefront. So in Horizon Europe, open science is uh, understood not only um, as um, open access, uh, so it's not limited to freely available research data or open access databases, but also openness is sought through different activities um, um, uh, and collaborations with different stakeholder groups. So this allows to expand the audience, uh, develop new methods of research, and of course, engage uh, public in, um, in a variety of ways. So uh, Horizon Europe and, to be, uh, and, and the European Commission is aiming to um, encourage and mainstream citizen engagement activities through a um, variety of funding mechanisms and also um, um, projects uh, who win funding from um, Horizon Europe have to report on citizen engagement activities. So this um, narrative of um, scientists um, needing to um, uh, encourage citizen and um, broader society um, um, participation in science is uh, becoming uh, very strong in different documents and procedures of uh, European framework programs. Um, if we look at um, uh, Lithuania, um, the country we are discussing in this presentation, we conducted uh, in, um, in some projects preliminary research to see how the public uh, and different stakeholders groups in our country, but also in um, Greece, Netherlands, and Spain understand um, the concepts of citizen science, open science, and RRI. So we can see that in Lithuania, um, uh, here on the slide, uh, most of the people that we um, surveyed uh, uh, were not familiar with the concept of citizen science. And this includes not only researchers, but also representatives of industry, public administration, and civil, uh, civil society. So in general, um, the um, recognition of citizen science is not that high. However, if we explained what citizen science is and what are the benefits of it, most of the people we interviewed, um, um, we surveyed, I'm sorry, um, agreed that they would be willing to participate in these activities and they would be willing to, um, to provide input and help scientists uh, to develop different kind of research ideas. Um, so if we look at the main developments related to citizen science in Lithuania, um, First, we have to establish that uh, there aren't too many um, 
um, incentives coming from the governmental organizations or from research performing organizations um, that encourage uh, scientists to include the different stakeholders into the research um, uh, process. So the public policy debate and legislation um, is kind of limited and um, currently mostly focuses on open access aspects and not engagement aspects. However, um, a number of initiative, initiatives and different kind of uh, projects uh, initiated by scientists, librarians, uh, administrations of university and citizens themselves um, um, exist in Lithuania, despite the lack of uh, legislation or um, strategic vision of um, uh, citizen engagement in Lithuanian RNI in ecosystem. So I will go through some of the examples uh, that exist in, in our country and comment uh, a bit on them and their importance. Uh, so, so first of all, uh, Citizen Science Association uh, was established by me and my colleagues in uh, 2020, uh, uh, which aims to um, involve uh, different um, organizations, uh, um, research organizations, but also citizens and different um, non-governmental organizations um, uh, to invite them to discuss the topics of citizen science and to aim for synergies and common projects uh, um, um, applying citizen science, um, citizen science methods. Uh, we also have a number of citizen science related uh, events organized by the uh, association together in collaboration with uh, not only uh, research institutions, but also uh, Lithuanian uh, Research Council, which also um, starts to um, spread this idea of the need to engage, um, engage the citizens. Um, in our university at Vilnius Tech, uh, uh, this year, um, I'm sorry, at the um, end of last year, we established uh, a citizen science uh, hub as a result of one European um, um, Horizon um, uh, 2020 project, which uh, aims to raise awareness about the benefits of open science and um, citizen science uh, uh, in our community. So in the context of Citizen Science Hub, uh, we also um, aim to invite um, um, researchers, especially um, PhD students or postdoc students um, to participate in the training that we are providing uh, to, um, uh, we also aim to create um, training material and different guidance in our local language in Lithuanian um, uh, so that people can understand the concepts uh, better. Uh, and in this um, uh, capacity, the hub also provides um, um, help to um, scientists who are willing to implement citizen science projects themselves. So we help them in the design process, implementation process, and also dissemination process to, to spread the news to uh, a broader uh, spectrum of stakeholders. So here I added a short plan um, and short introduction of how the hub operates and what kind of short and long-term goals uh, we have. Uh, I will not go into details. I just wanted to have this here in the presentation if someone uh, wants to analyze um, our work um, um, after, after the presentation. In general, we aim to create a community with skills and knowledge to develop citizen science projects and engage them in other initiatives. If we look beyond our university, we have uh, uh, some universities who already um, um, created specific guidelines on the institutional level on open science. And the most notable examples in, example in Lithuania is the Vilnius University, uh, who adopted open science guidelines in 2022. Uh, and they put uh, especially big emphasis on uh, citizen engagement. So not only on open access principles, but also on, um, on citizen engagement and introduced some incentives for researchers at um, Vilnius University to um, engage uh, citizens and um, and um, and um, uh, broader groups of society. Uh, we also already have some uh, researchers. Um, um, who implemented citizen science projects themselves. The numbers are not large. Uh, so citizen science is really not a very um, applied method uh, here in Lithuania in, in the region uh, in general for a variety of reasons we will discuss a bit later. However, a few pro projects already exist. So for example, Konas University of Technology implemented citizen science project in uh, the field of social sciences and um, um, 
looked into the participation of uh, local communities in creating a welfare society. We also have uh, one more nature-based uh, citizen science project implemented by Na Nature Research Center, uh, which was focused on biodiversity and um, um, and um, and um, fish management. I'm not. I'm not I was not involved in this project, so I'm not sure about the particular details. But um, the focus was on engaging citizens in tracking how um, biodiversity changes in our local local context. Uh, most notably, um, different Lithuanian institutions uh, like uh, Vilnius Tech, uh, which I represent, Mikolas Römeris University, Vitotas Magnus University, uh, Kona's um, um, University of Technology, uh, participate or coordinate uh, um, large European um, projects, um, uh, which are focused on um, uh, citizen science. Uh, so, for example, here at Vilnius Tech, we have three uh, projects like that in Centive, uh, which was focused on creating hubs of citizen science um, in different countries. Um, Tap Citizen is uh, focused on spreading the news um, about citizen science and creating learning plans for schools, uh, uh, most particularly for high school students um, and for teachers um, um, in order to apply citizen science uh, methodologies in their uh, lessons. And the newest addition to our portfolio is Climas Project, which focuses on citizen engagement and um, uh, in, in, in deliberations on um, uh, climate change on the, on the local level. So I think these projects uh, provide the biggest push uh, in our ecosystem um, in, uh, to, uh, to apply citizen science methods because they allow um, researchers at Lithuanian institutions to collaborate with researchers who have a bit more experience in uh, running citizen engagement activities, uh, allow to build capacities uh, with partners, and in this way spread the news about citizen and open science um, um, activities in our ecosystem. So in a way, the goals of uh, European Union and the European Commission are um, transmitting um, uh, through these projects into different parts, uh, different parts of the Europe and Lithuania uh, and Lithuania too. Um, quite uh, um, successful examples of uh, citizen science uh, in Lithuania exist um, at the school level. Uh, so uh, we have um, a number of very active school teachers who participate in uh, global programs um, such as the GLOW program uh, or uh, use um, applications such as iNaturalist uh, to engage their students in um, citizen uh, science um, activities. So for example, here on the right side uh, of my screen, you can see an example of Lithuanian informal, informal, um, non-formal, I'm sorry, non-formal education center of uh, uh, of schools. And they have created a, a game called Catch Them All based on the Pokemon game, which encourages school children to catch uh, uh, 100 different species across the span of the year. And in the end, win different kinds of uh, prizes. Um, in... In different kind of projects, I had an opportunity to talk with school teachers and ask about um, the reasons why they want to apply citizen science um, uh, projects in in their in their lessons. And most of them uh, said that uh, citizen science uh, is a very um, potent way to. Um, uh, not only introduce the pupils to um, um, to the ways the science works, or to, for example, introduce um, um, how scientists are collecting different um, sets of data, how they analyze them, and um, to showcase um, uh, that science has um, certain logic behind its processes. But also, it's a great way for um, um, school children to uh, learn how to love their environment, to protect it, uh, to understand how it's changing. And uh, and um, and to encourage um, um, encourage ways of uh, protecting our environment. So in this regard, uh, citizen science um, um, has a, a very strong potential to educate uh, our young society to not only love science but the, the environment around um, around them. Um, 
Also, we have some uh, small scale projects initiated by individual researchers, communities, and citizens, uh, which um, I have to be fair, started way before uh, the narrative of um, European Union, uh, or European Union uh, on citizen science uh, started. Uh, so for example, uh, we have an annual VN, uh, event uh, called the Rally of Species, where um, people interested in protecting the environment and uh, um, 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 meet annually to count different kind of uh, animal and also plant species in certain in certain uh, in certain areas. Um, we also aim in different kind of projects and also in the capacity of the um, citizen science hub, uh, both at Vilnius Tech and uh, on a national level, uh, to create, uh, like I said, resources in Lithuanian language on citizen science, um, which help um, our researchers to understand the processes a bit better in their own language and to see how it could be applied in, in a more specific context uh, of, um, um, of Lithuania. Uh, so, this is a short overview, overview of what is happening. Um, uh, we have, uh, like you see, um, quite a lot, a, a lot of different events happening. However, if we look at the situation uh, from more a higher level perspective and look at the whole ecosystem of Lithuania, uh, uh, of Lithuanian RNI, uh, we do see a number of um, uh, a number of, of barriers that exist and a number of. Um, miscommunication across different stakeholder groups, which limit um, the potential of citizen and open science in our, in our ecosystem. So um, in next few slides, uh, I will present research that I have done um, in my uh, postdoc project, um, which finished uh, last year. And here I looked at the um, uh, open science application for knowledge co-creation in Lithuanian context, and look at different framework and systemic conditions in Lithuania, which uh, foster or limit um, the implementation of open and citizen science activities. So let's start with the framework conditions. So the framework conditions refer to the structure that exists in uh, um, RNI field, which supports different kind of engagement, um, uh, different kind of engagement activities. Uh, so to pinpoint these conditions, I conducted um, um, a large scale, scale interview program, but also I looked at uh, different kind of strategic documents and previous uh, research that has been done um, in Lithuania to pinpoint specific uh, peculiarities of our ecosystem in regards of open science. So the first element that um, um, I looked, to, in, uh, looked into uh, was uh, RNI policy context, socioeconomic conditions, and the culture of, of participation in Lithuania. And uh, based on the research that I have conducted, the openness in science uh, in Lithuania uh, is um, in its very early stages of its realization. Uh, and we have a lot of political, socioeconomic, and cultural barriers. Uh, probably the most uh, interesting aspect is the cultural barriers, because um, other countries in Europe also have uh, uh, the political and economic barriers that stop uh, uh, researchers um, uh, from including uh, citizens in their research pro uh, projects. But in Lithuania and in, in our region in general, uh, the culture of participation faces uh, quite significant challenges, uh, because the civil society in Lithuania is quite passive. So not only in science, but in or other fields, so for example, volunteering and so on, we do see quite um, um, quite a lot of passivity uh, from Lithuanian um, uh, society. Of course, this is changing bit by bit. The uh, younger generation is uh, um, is more keen to, to be active in different um, uh, different fields, but still um, a large gap um, uh, a large gap uh, exists. And this is, of course, uh, influenced by our um, historical background, uh, where uh, participation and active uh, um, activities were considered uh, as a, um, as a threat. So it will take quite a long time for our society to heal and to understand um, that um, um, civic participation is something to aim for and not to be uh, feared of. Uh, like I said, this is changing and we do see positive development in this regard. Um, uh, however, we still have some uh, road to go. Uh, 
Um, when looking at the second dimension, the policies and funding that uh, favors open science, uh, we do see lack of direction and common understanding of open science. Uh, we do not really have uh, um, incentive and uh, reward structures um, uh, for, uh, for, for researchers to engage the citizens. So it's mostly focused on publications and not, um, not the other types of activities. But this is uh, not a local problem. This problem exists throughout the Europe and probably throughout, um, uh, throughout um, um, the world. So most of the activities of scientists are focused on, on reaching the excellence of science through publications um, and not on principles of openness. Uh, in the context of Europe, we also see some important initiatives that, that, which aim uh, to change the way science is evaluated. But again, we see that um, um, there's a long head ahead of us um, um, to, to achieve um, uh, evaluation that is more focused on openness and not on excellence. Um, the last dimension of the framework conditions in Lithuania is the infrastructure for openness. So different tools, training activities, um, um, uh, hardware, which allows scientists to, um, um, to, to disseminate uh, scientific information easily. So in this regard, we do have uh, in Lithuania quite a lot of support coming from European Union uh, through different kind of uh, funding activities focused uh, on open access principles. Uh, however, uh, what is missing is not the hardware, but the soft measures like training of researchers, uh, um, 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 PhD students and so on at different levels um, of their careers uh, focused uh, on uh, um, encouraging them and also introducing to different uh, principles related to open science, for example, the FAIR principles, RRI principles and so on. So we do not really have a national strategy or tools for that to address those gaps in, um, uh, gaps in skills and competencies here in, in Lithuania. Of course, this is changing bit by bit. Uh, like I said, the, um, the uh, Citizen Science Association does uh, a good job in, the, in, in this regard. We do have different hubs and Lithuanian institutions who are aiming to um, make this gap smaller and aiming to uh, Lithuanian uh, to make the Lithuanian researchers well versed with this um, with these topics. Uh, another set of conditions um, I look to uh, in this research were the uh, systemic conditions. So these um, refer to um, actions that enable co-creation and enable uh, close collaboration with diff between different groups of society. So uh, not only with uh, uh, between researchers, but also between researchers. Um, 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 citizens, industry representatives, governmental organizations, and so on. So by looking at these um, um, softer links in our ecosystem, uh, we do see we do see um, um, quite a, um, currently quite a disappointing view. Uh, if we look at the diversity of act actors involved in this in our ecosystem, uh, we do see a lot of fragmented links between different actors and a large number of barriers which are limiting collaborations. And again, these are mostly linked to lack of skills and limited resources of the actors um, and limited time allocated to collaboration between different research groups, between different institutions and so on. Um, there is also lack of shared vision and trust. Uh, we do not have a, um, a common understanding uh, and common principles of open science defined on a national level. And um, uh, this means that it's difficult to translate the relevance of open science and co-creation to different stakeholder groups. Another aspect that limits um, uh, the a shared vision and trust between stakeholders is that um, the relationship between st the different stakeholders and especially between different universities in Lithuania are defined mostly by competition and not cooperation. So uh, the universities aim to attract the bigger number of the students and try to limit the collaboration um, uh, of, um, of different uh, researchers and different um, common, uh, common projects. So of course uh, exceptions exist, but uh, uh, but um, uh, but in most cases uh, the people I interviewed and documents I analyzed show that uh, co lack of cooperation defines the relationships in our um, ecosystem. 
And other elements are also important. Maybe I will not go so deep into those details because I want to leave some time for, um, um, for a discussion. So we also lack consistent and dynamic communication, which is linked to the fact that uh, uh, researchers um, uh, do not have or are not trained on basic um, uh, things like science communication. So it's hard for researchers to find the um, relevant and easily understandable words to communicate what they do to a broader society. We, um, in most cases, the institutional support is lacking um, and, and uh, researchers as a result choose uh, um, not to communicate or choose the wrong methods for communication. Again, this is changing bit by bit and we do see in Lithuania and different organizations uh, and different universities, uh, um, the communication aspect getting stronger. Um, however, uh, uh, we still need to make some progress on that. Uh, and then there are intermediaries, which means uh, um, that we don't uh, have um, um, people who are able to uh, talk uh, um, between different stakeholder uh, stakeholder groups. There is some uh, advancement in this regard, um, and uh, academic libraries in Lithuania put uh, really a lot of efforts to connect uh, um, their readers, uh, their researchers, uh, um, and, and um, um, serve as a platform uh, for broad other societal engagement. However, the intermediaries um, um, are, um, are uh, missing. And lastly, the feedback and monitoring system um, is lacking in our ecosystem. So we do not really track the uh, open science activities. Uh, and this applies also to open access uh, activities. So it's not really clear um, um, we, we, although Lithuania has uh, open access um, guidelines defined at the national level, and nobody is really tracking uh, how uh, those guidelines are implemented at different institutions. So it's really hard to see how we are progressing without um, measuring our uh, measuring our performance. Um, we also did uh, some research in other projects uh, which were more focused on citizen science um, and different barriers and drivers of citizen science implementation in Lithuania. Uh, uh, so, for example, in the context of CS for Welfare project, uh, we conducted, again, a lot of interviews with different stakeholder groups like scientists, policymakers, teachers, and so on. And uh, the results were quite similar. Uh, we, uh, If we look uh, um, at uh, citizen science implementation, um, there's lack of institutional support, uh, lack of understanding of what citizen science is. We don't have enough uh, communication and science um, outreach um, skills and capacities. And uh, uh, the cooperation between different stakeholder groups is, um, um, is, um, is lacking. So to end on a more positive note and to move towards a discussion um, uh, with all of you who joined this call today, um, based on the research that we conducted in different projects, I wanted to highlight some ways to move forward because uh, we, like, like you saw, we have a lot of gaps, but we also have um, a lot of nice initiatives uh, coming either way. Uh, uh, so... Uh, what is needed is to a uh, common vision uh, of uh, Lithuanian um, um, organizations in charge of shaping the policy of um, RNI uh, here locally. Um, there's a need at the institutional level to foster uh, the culture of openness um, across, across all levels of RNI ecosystem. And we also need to find ways to maintain and strengthen the capacities uh, of uh, individual and institutional intermediaries who are able to translate uh, uh, the language of one stakeholder group to another. And I think the most important um, thing we need to learn as an ecosystem, not only in Lithuania, but probably in, uh, in Europe in general, is uh, vulnerability. Because openness, like in relationship, means that you have to be a vulnerable and open part of yourself to someone um, uh, you trust. And, uh, and uh, in, uh, mm, Translating this message to researchers and um, different academic workers in Lithuanian institutions could be um, uh, could be a way for us uh, to move forward and create um, uh, relationships based on trust, co you know, cooperation, and uh, and, um, and 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 a common vision. 
so that's it. This is a short presentation that I wanted to, um, to give you. And I'm really looking forward to hear your questions and comment on more specific aspects that you found um, interesting. Dear Monica, thank you very much. It was really, uh, it was a really interesting talk from another perspective of the talks that we have used, you know, the last, you know, two <laughs> years, more engineering materials, lasers. This is like gives another dimension to the research. I, I was like in a meeting with the US ambassador before two days and he told us about education. And he told us like, look, you should keep two, two words, you know, regarding your strategy in education, gender balance and inclusivity. And mm -hmm. I will say this, without knowing anything about this, and I'm very happy and fortunate that I follow your talk, that it's a great tool of inclusivity, the citizen, uh, the citizen science or the open science, you know, activities. So I have some questions, but I will provide here. I would like to congratulate you for this talk. Uh, and I will give the floor now to the audience if, you, if they have any questions. Otherwise, I will start with mine. Okay. So if, please, if you stop sharing your screen, it will ah, be- Ah, sure, 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 sure. Don't, don't okay. worry, don't worry. I forgot. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Okay, I will start with mine. Ah, ah okay, Asta, the floor yes. is yours. Thank you. Uh, hi, Monica. Thank you very much for this talk. It was really, really, uh, let's say, yeah, I agree, Costas. It's different dimension and different, different topics. But I wonder about the role of municipalities. Sorry if I missed that. But I think municipalities as a player in that ecosystem are super important because they gather a lot of data and probably the usage of data is limited. Uh, yeah. Nowadays, yeah. do you know good examples how municipalities are, in, let's say, included into, into that ecosystem as a player? Uh, I know some good practice examples coming from Netherlands. Uh, um, um, there are different cities and Amsterdam included, which uh, do encourage um, um, the citizen participation, especially in data collection on different aspects of city life. So for example, noise pollution, pollution in general, um, I don't know, traffic uh, so the citizens are given um, like smart kits which enable them to collect data uh, additional data on the top of data that uh, municipalities already collect and to get more in-depth insights uh, i haven't seen any such examples in lithuanian context but i do know that vilnius city municipality is currently really a keen to do something in this regard and in the capacity in, in, in the capacity of Vilnius Tech and some projects that we are implementing in, in, at the university, we are in the talks with the Vilnius City Municipality to implement some common projects focused on citizen engagement. So I think they are willing, but uh, uh, the situation is similar probably to the research institutions. The skills are lacking because we are not really accustomed to um, invite people to join the processes and open up and be vulnerable. So to be influenced by, uh, by citizens and to allow them to make some, some decisions or to collect some data. But again, this is changing. And like I said, the municipality right now is looking for more ways to allow citizens, citizens to be part of decision-making process. Yeah, I think that students being very smart citizens, they can contribute a lot, a lot. And this could be a very interesting track for increasing impact of alliances like ours. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in, 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 in the context of Climos project, I introduced briefly uh, this uh, uh, autumn, uh, we will do one workshop. A bit, we don't. We are not sure about the whole concept yet, but we want to do a workshop with the students at Vilnius Tech uh, in the context of noise pollution and Vil, uh, Vilnius uh, City Municipality. They want to adapt a new plan of managing noise pollution, and what they want to test it out with our students to see, you know, what could be improved. So this will be one example example of such close cooperation. <laughs> Yes, yes, if I see that you are raising your hand, maybe you have additional. Yes, yes, if Asta, yes. you, you don't have any additional questions. No, 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 okay. I'm not a military officer. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> Joseph, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Monica, for, for this uh, presentation. Uh, it's uh, kind of a coincidence. I, I yesterday gave a, a lecture uh, on open science and uh, reality check within Athena at European. Japanese conference mm -hmm. uh, that we are running now in Maribor. And of course, I addressed also the 
citizen science in the context of open science. Uh, but uh, my conclusion was that Athena has a lot to do in this field still. So I'm very happy to hear about your activities. And uh, since I know that uh, also in Maribor, at Maribor University and in the library, there are a lot of uh, activities uh, within the citizen science, I'd just like to, to um, uh, offer an initiative that, that we should have maybe in, in next uh, term of Athena, uh, kind of a, a pool or guidelines for, for the citizen science so that those who are already active uh, could join their effort and share the, the knowledge to others too. So thank you again. Uh, and uh, so this was not a question, just an observation. <laughs> I, I run now to my lectures. So thank okay. you and bye-bye. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jorge, for this. I was keeping a note. I had a note regarding what Joseph has mentioned. Like, you know, you may, you presented, you know, some guidelines in Lithuania mm -hmm. about the open uh, open uh, citizen science. So I would like, can we have it in a Word or in a, or in a PDF to translate them to all the Athena languages? Probably this could be a start. This is what I mentioned, you know, uh, about our activities and create, you know, this Athena citizen science hub, because a similar thing you have created. I kept here the open, um, where do I have it? or the or citizen science hub in VGTU. So why not to create the citizen science hub in Athena? I mean, I will provide, of course, the floor to our Lithuanian colleagues. You know, Astaya as a coordinator of Athena is here to start. Otherwise, you know, I can, you know, yeah, I, I can start. It. All uh, the material that we created are, are, of course, shareable. We created them. Of course, it's an open science. Open you cannot, you yeah, know, it's open science, it. so we cannot be closed. <laughs> OK, I mean, if you can provide it to me, I will be responsible for the alliance just for the translation. I will give the floor to Asta to create you know, a web page about the Athena citizen, a citizen science hub in order to start, and we will place. I know that probably you know the cultural and the local needs probably they will affect, but we are going to have some guidelines from a very mature player how to do it. You know, in English, in Greek, in Italian, in, in any language of Athena, uh, it, it is an excellent. I think that you know this is will be excellent, and of course Athena one of the priorities like how do you get engaged with the local communities? And if we have the experts, why we should discover the wheel from the beginning? It's excellent. Um, uh, any other question? I'm sorry. <laughs> any other? No, I just question? wanted to highlight the importance of you know uh, players like Athena focusing on um, just just having something on the website on citizen science and open science yeah. allows the, the community that you attract to understand that it's an important yes. issue and it should be pursued. So you don't have to be experts, but at least you know naming it exactly. is a very important way to mainstream this idea across European communities. Yeah, I mean, it's not only the expertise, it's also the efficiency. If you have someone that they know and they have the experience how to do it, why I should spend, you know, more time learning by my mistakes. I will start from a better point. This is the... Sure. Sure. And, so, you know, I, I think that Asta will agree to create, you know, this. And if you send me, I will be, I will take the time and the effort in order to translate them you know, in all the languages, if you can send me Lithuanian, it's going to be something nice. Of course, uh, um, um, I, I will- If you have them in English, it's even nicer because I will not need, you know, the translation. Uh, I do have something in English too. So I will, okay, I will send me, you know, collect everything yeah, in one yeah, place yeah. and, and yes. send you a package of- Exactly. Uh, so I have, I, I have, so you have answered one of my questions. <laughs> the other question that I have is like, how do you motivate the active participation of citizens uh, do you have some tips in order to engage the citizens, you know, within, you know, some research that you are doing from the university or some research that, you know, the citizens, they would like to happen uh, mm -hmm. under the supervision of uh, the universities? And uh, the, another question that I have is related to this, I, th I think, what are the communication channels that you, you are using? I mean, Asla mentioned something about municipalities, other communication channels. Okay, so I will start with the motivation aspect and then we can, because both of them are closely co connected. So in most cases, uh, the success of citizen science project depends um, on the com pre-existing community or pre uh, or a very relevant topic. So for example, those who are uh, had uh, interest in um, like uh, walking around the forest and looking at different kinds of birds, and uh, when they find an app that is relevant for them, they, they will use it. So you cannot create, you know, a hobby or a willingness to do. So people, if, if uh, so citizen science allows to 
put you know a technological layer on different hobbies and um, activities uh, that citizens are doing either either way uh, so then scientists only need to find those communities and suggest, you know, the ways and to showcase how the, their hobby could also translate into the benefits for science and broader society. Uh, another way to go is to find a very timely and relevant topic. So, for example, when COVID hit, we had one example of uh, uh, Lithuanian researchers. I, I don't want to mistake you, but I think it was from Vilnius University, which uh, uh, conducted a very large scale survey, which um, um, invited not a survey, maybe an experiment, which invited uh, uh, people to uh, record their um, how they feel across certain periods um, of time. Yeah, and in this way, they were able to collect uh, the data much faster than through uh, usual uh, usual way, and to collect uh, much more data than the uh, official institutions uh, who were in charge of uh, you know tracking the numbers of people who got sick. So uh, this was a very timely and relevant topic. The people did not did not know what to do, and scientists came with a very uh, nice solution, you know, to 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 extract the data that they needed based on the topic that is very very relevant. So these are the two key routes because uh, you know you cannot create a project that is relevant only for scientific community or for scientists itself, uh, and then just uh, uh, encourage the citizens to participate. There are some projects who use money as you know, incentive, um, uh, so they, they provide some financial contributions, but again, then this, a lot of ethical questions arise as a result of uh, financial contribution. And in terms of communication channels, this uh, largely depends on the, like in any field of communication, it largely depends on the audience that you want to um, um, to reach. So for example, if you want to introduce the projects to, uh, to schools, you have to connect to teachers. Uh, if you want to connect with, to bird lovers, you have to find uh, Facebook groups or events uh, where they gather. Uh, so the communication tools, uh, yeah, yeah we, we mostly go through the route of social media, but it depends. So for example, if you want to connect with seniors, uh, social media may be, not be a way to go. So I would say that the communication aspect is highly dependable on, on the audience that you want to reach. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very clear answer. Thank you. Any other question? or it's time now, we are reaching the time to close. Thank you again, Monica. Definitely, okay. I will come back myself. <laughs> okay, <this>. okay. <laughs> so Bye. as we agreed, I will, I will send you what, what I have and will help with the translation on or any other guidance. That yeah, send me this, please. I will do it. You know, send me through ASTA, of course, because ASTA is the local coordinator of oh, Athena. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, and um, I would like to invite you also in the event that we are going to do with the Athena in City in Crete, give us, you know, face to face, you know, this presentation at the end of September. Have you ever been in Crete? Uh, yes, but a very long time ago. <laughs> okay, now we, it's time to come back. <laughs> uh, from the 25th to the 29th of um, okay. September, we organize, you know, over there like a symposium of people. And I will say like a face to face presentation, even a workshop, you know, that we can provide to us. That we do, we know it's like a very important tool of what we are doing. Uh, it's, it's very welcome. So please speak with Asta to tell you about the process, the funding, and uh, you. Uh, we are expecting you uh, in Crete at the end of September. Thank you, Constantinos, for our invitation, and thank you for everyone else who was listening. No, no, I will thank if you say yes. Do you say yes? Yeah, yeah. So I, okay. I, I know my calendar, so I'm free at that time. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Everyone, thank you. Thank and, you. Bye-bye. Uh, bye. -bye. bye.